Hi, it's Dave from VVAX Metrotech. We're going to make a series of short videos to talk about some of the more advanced techniques for uh, allowing LSPs to do more confident locates. And so we're going to start off in a situation where I've got two different utilities coming into the side of the same house. You can see here I've got power coming in here. I've got a gas meter here, gas lines right there. So we know right from the start that there's at least two lines coming into this building. And since we don't know where either of them are, We'll take some steps to locate them. I'm going to start off clipping on the meter base with my transmitter. Just plug it in. Grab my ground stake. Put the ground stake over here. Ground it. And clip on the meter base itself. Turn the transmitter off for a sec. And I'm just going to clip right here on the meter base itself. Turn the transmitter on. And it confirms we're putting out zero milliamps. So we're not launching any signal yet because we haven't made a good connection yet. So we'll just take this and scrape a little bit here. And now I'm putting out 10 milliamps of current, 15 milliamps. So we have a good signal launch here now. So we understand the signal is now leaving, going out on the on the power cable going out towards the street, the power service, and somehow it's making its way back to that ground stake that I placed right there. Let's turn on the receiver. We're doing this at, uh, we'll do this at 33 kilohertz. So I turn on my receiver, dial in 33 kilohertz, there it is right there, and do a quick sweep. And this is the first step that anyone takes. Hook up your transmitter, get 10 or 15 feet away, and just do a sweep across the area and see what you pick up. So here we've got something right here. I have a signal here. Turn my sensitivity up a little bit. Here's a, here's a conductor right here. And since I don't know where this line is, I keep sweeping. And I find a second line here. So here's a line right here. It's going in this direction. My meter's there, so it could easily be coming in this direction. So I've got some signal here, period. And if I sweep back to where my first signal was, I pass over top, and again, I've got lots of signal. In fact, I go off scale. I'll turn my gain down a little bit and start to do my comparison. So I've made signal in one location, but I'm picking it up in two locations. This happens routinely. Now I'm going to try and decide which of these two lines is mine, which one's going to get the red tape. So in this case, if I move my receiver back and forth, I've got lots of signal. The compass is telling me it's going in this direction. I'll go to peak and null so I can compare one to the other. My null tells me it's right here. My peak tells me I've got my foot on it. My peak tells me the same thing. I'll put it down on the ground. It says it's three foot seven inches deep. I'll raise it about a foot up. And now it says four foot seven. So this is a pretty good signal, obviously, but I'm still concerned about that. Let's go back and compare this field to that field. By the way, one more thing. I've got nine, nine, uh, about 10 milliamps of current here. Let's go and have a look at that second signal we had a second ago. Walk back over to here. Here's my strongest signal right here. Here's the peak. The null response takes me way over here somewhere. In fact, there is no null response, which is not a good sign. If I place it on the ground, it says it's eight foot four inches deep. I raise it about a foot up. It now says it's eight foot five inches deep. Another bad indicator this isn't my line. Current measurement over there, I had nine and change. Here I've got three. So let's recap. We made one signal, we're picking up in two locations, but by comparing peak and null and depth and current, we can easily see that this is not my line, that's my line. If you didn't do any of those things, if you just slap the trans transmitter onto the line and walk over here, because you might have seen some red paint here from before, someone else used the wrong color paint, you might have walked over here, picked up signal and said, yeah, here it is here and marked it out here easily. If you don't pay attention to the peak and null and depth and current and the information they're giving you, you might miss this entirely. So let's talk about what we can do to change this. We lit up one line, but found two signals. And probably the reason is we put our ground stake over close to this gas line, not thinking much about that. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my ground stake one side or the other. I wanna get my ground return point 
away from what we believe is a second line. My choice would be to put my ground stake way out there somewhere. But if there's a second line here and I put my ground stake there, my signal will go out on one line and come back on that still because it's trying to get to the return point. So instead what I'm going to do is use my ground spool here that everyone should have. I'm going to move my ground way over there. Now I got a big driveway to get across here, so it's a bit of a pain, but that's life. It's part of locating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my ground spool, disconnect this, take my ground stake over here, stick it in here, wrap it around once or twice so it doesn't come off. And then spool out my ground spool. And look for a spot to connect to. That one there. I'm going to take my ground spool from my ground return point. Some kid must have tangled my leads. And I'm simply going to clip. I'm going to clip my return point onto this point on my ground spool called a strip back. So now what I'm doing is I'm sending signal out on my power cable, coming back through the ground to there, we believe, and then back through to here to complete the circuit. Turn on my transmitter. It's already going. Turn on the receiver. And now we'll walk right back to the same spot we had that signal a minute ago. And here was my signal. Still lots of signal. Peak response is right here. Peak and null line up beautifully right on top of each other. Still getting three foot eleven, which is close to what I had before. Now I'm getting four foot ten. Current measurement, I've got eleven milliamps of current. And if you recall, using a direct connection, we had signal on the gas line over there. Let's go and have a look at the gas line now and see if it still lights up. Right off scale. Here's the here's the gas line in the same place we had it before. A much weaker signal. In fact. I'm not really getting a good strong signal at all. It's not giving me a, I'm not getting any kind of peak and null. I'm certainly getting a signal, but I'm down to 0 0.08 or less than one milliamp of current. So by moving my ground return point to that side, I'm now almost eliminating this as return path, which means that this field now is interfering with that field. In fact, that field's interfering with this one, it takes this right out of the picture. These are the kind of techniques that people use to eliminate or reduce distortion and get more accurate locates. So now the next step or the last step, if you want, uh, to try and eliminate that field interference we talked about would be instead of clipping to my meter base to light this line up, instead I use the signal clamp. Now we know signal clamps put much less signal onto a line than clipping does, but oftentimes a little bit less signal actually helps you. So in this case, I'm going to unplug my lead set, plug in the clamp, it's around the incoming line. I'm still going to use 33 kilohertz. There it is. Now I'm putting all my signal on the neutral on the service going out towards the transformer. Turn on my receiver. Again, we'll use 33 kilohertz. We made direct connections. We had signal here and there. We were able to reduce it on that by moving the ground stake. But in this case, using a signal clamp, I still have a good strong signal in the same place. A minute ago, I had nine milliamps of current. Now I've got about eight and a half. So I still have lots of good signal here. Peak and null line up beautifully. Depth measurement, consistent with what we had before. Raising a foot, changes by a foot. Everything about this signal looks good using the clamp. Let's go and have a look at where we know that gas line was from before. Walk over. My gain's cranked wide open. I'm almost not picking up this gas line. So by clamping on the, on the power incoming line, I now putting virtually no signal on this line whatsoever. So in this case, clamping would have been better than clipping, uh, just to eliminate the interference that might have come from accidentally locating the gas line. So in conclusion, we realized that putting a clamp around the incoming line of the power service 
was a better technique than clipping the meter. Now, sometimes you can't get the clamp around the, the stack coming in, sometimes too close to the building, sometimes they're covered right to the bottom of the, uh, the stack. And so you're not able to put a clamp on below or sometimes above. So all you can do is, is use the clip-on setting. And if you have to use the clip-on, just be aware of what else might be there and try and position your ground so you're not gonna light up that other line on the return path signal flow. We hope this helped.